Council iLab environment is a dedicated virtual network segment pre-populated with a variety of virtual machines to allow students to perform their various lab exercises and experiment with the tools in a safe, resettable environment that's available 24-7 with any standard web browser. So we're going to be taking a look at the interface and specifically one of the modules out of the CHV9 class dealing with network sniffing. So initially, uh, the interface, we're going to look at the interface a little bit, and initially each module has a section, variety lab task dedicated to that body of knowledge, and an objective and scenario is provided at the beginning of each task. So it gives you sort of an overview of what you're going to be doing, and a scenario that supports the various activities you'll be directed to complete in the lab tasks. So I'm just going to go ahead next through uh, the initial objective interface, and we're going to be looking at sniffing a password using Wireshark submitted to a website from another one of our virtual machines. So a little bit about the interface. The virtual machine interface, the main window, gives us the desktop of the VM that we're currently focused on or we're currently entering our, our input to. So we do have a few virtual machines to choose from. There's a server 2012, 2008, Windows 8.1, Windows 7, Kali Linux, Ubuntu, and an Android platform. So toggling between the virtuals is extremely easy. Just hit the drop down, select the VM you want to look at. You can also navigate to the various machines from the machines pane on the right hand side of the interface. The content pane gives you the specific tasks you're performing, an overview on the right hand side, and then a little bit more detail at the bottom portion of the browser window that will give you the step by steps to perform each lab. So it's going to walk you through everything. The camera button will give you a screenshot of what you should be seeing as you perform each task to give you a little visual confirmation that you are where you should be. The pop-up for the alert and also the idea will give you some additional details for completing the lab task as well or give you some tips as you go along. So as each task is completed, there's a done button to check off in the task pane that that particular task has been completed and you move on to the next step. The display option gives the ability to switch to like a full screen mode or resize the window uh, to, or fit the window to the machine. The commands menu gives you a three key combination, windows key combinations, paste options for passwords, clipboard text, a power option for power cycling the machine, and also a virtual keyboard if you wanted to use that to enter input. All right, so we're just gonna follow the task and we're gonna walk through the lab uh, for sniffing passwords using Wireshark. So our first order of business is to follow the specifics at the bottom of the window. We're going to select the server 2012 for the machines pane, which is already pre-selected. So I can go ahead and go to the commands menu and click control alt delete. All right, so I've completed that task. I can check off each task as it's been completed. The next task is to paste in the password. So I could type it in manually or I could go to the commands window and paste the password. All right, so password is now pasted. I'll go ahead and hit the arrow key to enter the password and we also have the information dialog or the idea gives us that same information. Hey, you know, you can use the commands menu to paste the password, type it in manually. All right, so our next task, now that that's been completed, is to close the server manager window. All right, so task completed, done on that. And then it's going to want us to install the Wireshark protocol analyzer. All right, so we do have a alert says while installing Wireshark, uncheck install when PCAP option, click install. So we'll take, take note of that. And we will follow the directives, navigate to the E drive, CH tools, module seven sniffing, sniffing tools, and Wireshark, and double click the executable for installation. All right, so we're going to just basically follow the defaults, steps to install Wireshark, agree with the license agreement, next, accept the defaults, next, and it did tell us to uncheck install win PCAPs, so we'll go ahead and uncheck that. All right, we'll give it a second to install. and we can check our alert. 
which is the same directive while installing wire sharks. We've already seen that. All right, so we can just next and finish, and then check off that task as being complete. All right, so the next option, our next order of business, is to actually launch Wireshark from the app screen. So I'm going to close out that file browser window and click on the app screen, and we're going to run Wireshark listed here as new item. All right, so Wireshark launched, task completed. And that brings us up to the main window. We can double check our screenshot and see if that's what we should be seeing. Everything looks good. I'm going to close the screenshot and on to the next task. All right, so we're going to select an interface from the capture dropdown. You can also select the interface list here, but we'll just follow the lab directives. So capture and interfaces, or even use control I. And that brings up the interfaces. And we're going to select the ethernet to adapter, which is already checked and then click start to start capturing traffic. All right. So we're going to click on done with that. Now it's capturing packets. And check the screenshot. We should be seeing seeing something similar. All right. Well, then the next option, or the next task is to switch machines to the 81 machine. Log in. Oops, paste password and log in. And we can scroll down, see if we've seen everything we need to see. Click on done with that. And now it wants us to open a web browser. I'm actually going to make this a little bit bigger. Uh, launch Chrome or Firefox. And we're going to log in to www.moviescope.com. All right, so it wants us to log in as a username of Sam and a password of test. And we'll log in. All right, tell it to not save the password. All right, then we'll switch over back over to the 2012 box. And stop the capture. All right, so We've worked with two machines already, pretty easy to switch between in the interface. And now we'll go on to the next task. All right, so now we're going to filter by HTTP. And enter. That's going to filter by hypertext transfer protocol. All right, and the screenshot should confirm that we see only HTTP packets. And then we can actually do a find option and find a packet. In this case, we're going to be looking for uh, a match for a text password. So I'll click on done on that. I'm sorry, edit and find packet. All right, and then it's telling us we're searching for uh, a text password. Under find, we're going to configure a string value. All right, and select packet bytes. All right, select narrow and wide, which is already selected, and select down. All right, so we're going to use text password in the filter field. Actually, the screenshot will show us what we want to type in. So do txt pwd and find the packet. All right, and actually finds the TXT PWD. It does tell us if we don't find it in the first attempt, repeat step 16 and 17, but we got it in the first attempt. So we see the text password. See the screenshot that confirms that. And it's actually Sam in test. So we can actually hit it a couple times, find the packet, and that allows us to identify the password. All right, so there we go. There's the text password equals test. Whoops. And login equals Sam. All right, so a little bit of hunting, a little bit cryptic, but that search string allows us to find 
a good indicator of text-based password. All right, so we've completed our lab task, and actually this one goes on to set up some remote captures. We just wanted to illustrate the functionality of the virtual machines, uh, take a look at a couple of the lab tasks. Now at that point, I can decide, hey, you don't want to save this lab for later. So I can save and close the lab, or I can cancel it and start all over again. So you can continue your, your lab exercise to complete each task, saving each machine configuration for up to seven days, resume it at any time from any location with a web browser, just log into your account. You can also cancel it out and start over entirely. So the structured lab tasks are really just the beginning. We do have some specific tasks for you to perform, but as you complete those tasks and you become familiar with the various steps, then you can start trying to repeat the same tasks from memory, uh, and then you can start playing around with tools and running different types of attacks, completely freestyle, outside of just the lab directive. So it is a completely uh, blank slate in that respect. All the hacking tools for the course are provided in the CH Tools folder, which is shared across all machines. So all the course tools for all the modules are included. It gives you the opportunity to play with all of them in a safe, remotely accessible, pre-configured environment. So that's iLabs.